good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. There's no power to do it. Because why? They're afraid of what they'll lose if they sell out to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I'll lose control of this. I'll lose control of that. I won't have my, I can't do this. I, 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 and who's on the throne? I. Anorexic believers. Let's go to the next slide, please. The obese. It seems to me that in the church of Jesus Christ, or in the church world today, you notice I corrected my lingo there. In the church world today, I think this is probably our biggest affliction. In America today, there is no shortage of resources regarding spiritual things. We have bookstores, and the bookstores, there's still a bevy of them in our towns. But there's bookstores, Christian bookstores, going out of business because we have online Christian book wholesalers. Just heard somebody say this week, I don't go to the bookstore much at all, if any, anymore. I have them delivered right to my door. Books, books, books. Right now, I'm guessing if your community is the same as ours out there, you could probably turn on the FM dial to about five Christian radio stations. You go to the television and you find all kinds of Christian preachers, preachers, preachers. And then you sit in your church and you've got mighty men of valor that are preaching the everlasting gospel, breaking it down for your spirit to consume it and to receive it. There's no shortage. But my friend, if you don't do something with it, you will look like this, spiritually speaking. Let me tell you something. I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but this man or woman is going to have a very, very difficult time getting out of that chair to do anything, even to go put out body poisons and toxins in the bathroom because of lack of exercise. And so not only are the pounds packing on, but now the toxins are beginning to build all around, even externally on that body. Refusal to do anything with what we know. Jesus. Serious stuff. I've also called this the bobblehead syndrome. You know, you open the cornflakes box and then there's a bobblehead with a head about three times the size of the rest of the body and so much knowledge up in the head and it never falls to here. Lack of exercise for what we know. Not mighty men of valor. Next one. Now I've blocked out numbers and all this stuff so you, that's not the way I left it, I promise. <laughs> that was all covered over. Now, now look at this. I, I tried to find who I believe was probably the most excellent athlete at any whatever sport. And I know this may touch a nerve with some of you northern Ohioers. But just look at these shoulders. Do you see these shoulders? Do you think, if, if you know who this is, do you think this man began to excel at the level of excellence where he did just uh, eating and sitting around lounging? No. No, while you and I are in bed, he's somewhere building himself up. He's out there when the rest of society sleeps. He's shooting jump shots. He's shooting foul shots. He's pumping iron. He's doing agility drills back and forth. And the sweat pours and he goes and takes in more protein. And he takes in more carbohydrates. And he goes and does it again. And I promise you that there are times in this man's life and others like him that they say, is it worth it? I don't have a life like the others. I know I have my millions and millions and tens of millions of dollars, but is it worth it not to have a life? But the pursuit of excellence keeps driving him. Yeah. And he trains, and he eats right, and he yeah. trains some more, and he eats right, and he trains for the day. Listen, listen. Are we together? 
for the day when the battle shall ensue. And he knows that he has been equipped. And he knows that he is trained effectively. And he knows that he has eaten correctly. The toxins are gone out of his body. The battle is coming up. And he can go out and face the battle and know that he has paid the price. The strength now lies within him. As a football coach, when the going gets tough and we're doing crusader reminders for the penalties that happened in the past game and they're doing up-downs and push-ups and bear crawls for 100 yards and the tears are flowing down the freshman and sophomore's cheeks and I get down next to him and I said, you know when this is going to pay off? You're working harder than the other team is. You are being more equipped. You are being more skilled. You are being more trained than the other team is. And when battle day comes, you will be so thankful. Because not only will your physical body be strong and ready for the battle, but your mind will know that I have paid the price. I deserve to win. Now that's not in the natural. What about the spiritual? When you and I abide in the presence of the Almighty God and we know who won the battle, we know He is the glorious conqueror, we know He is the victor, we abide in His presence and He imparts that glory into us and He speaks and He reveals toxins and He reveals what He wants us to do here and He prepares us and we're faithful and we move where He says to go and we don't go where He doesn't say to go. See, Jesus had this testimony. He said, I came to do the will of the Father. I speak nothing unless the Father gives it. I do nothing unless it is given to me and my Father. And through the night hours out in the garden when the rest of society is sleeping, there he is in the garden. He's crying out to the Father, Oh, Father, oh, my Father, prepare me for the work you have me to do. And there he is. He's up in the mountain praying to his Father. And he sees the disciples rowing and see. And he's watching the storm come up. He says, Father, equip me to go down and still those waters. He sees the multitude over there waiting for him. And he knows they're hungry. And he's getting ready for the Father to equip him to multiply loaves and fishes. He is trained ahead of the battle. And the battle belongs to the Lord. There's no mental defeat Because he's abode in the presence of Almighty God. There's no physical defeat because the Father strengthens him even in his body. Paying the price to become the victor of heaven and earth for all eternity. And he is the commander in chief that wants to lead us into training and to coach us and to equip us and to tell us things that must shortly come. He speaks to us of the battle that will ensue. Last night we heard Brother Reuben share some things that are shaping up. He shared more out there in Harlan. Things that are shaping up. And he gives a prophetic word within the body of Christ. Why? So that we can prepare our hearts for, the, for, for what is coming. And we begin to strengthen ourselves and exercise ourselves in the word of God. And become mighty, mighty men of valor. Mighty in Jesus Christ. Where are the mighty ones today? We want the blessed church in society in mass is wanting the blessings of God and sit around the table. You know the old song, my house is full but my fields are empty. No one wants to work in my fields. People want the blessings of God. Give me, give me this, Lord. Give me, give me get that. We got a give me, give me mentality. You know, we want all the blessings but we want to do nothing. God have mercy on us. It doesn't work that way. Never has, never will. He is a God full of mercy, of course. I understand that. He is so merciful. He gives us things we absolutely do not deserve. But when comes time, I'm talking about the time for the battle, my brother, my sister. You cannot fight the good fight of faith without intense training, 
hardships, trials. Oh, we could talk this evening, this afternoon about the trials. In Malachi chapter 3, he talks about the refiner's fire that is going to come when the, when the Lord of all the earth comes to the earth and he will purify the sons of Levi. And oh, we could talk about that beautiful fuller soap, refiner's fire. Then we go to the book of Peter and Peter talks about this, that the trial of your faith. What's he talking about? The test. He puts us through a test Because he wants to see how strong is my son. Can I trust him for this valiant task? And he puts us through the fire. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold which perisheth, though it be tried with fire, may be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. He puts us through the test to see, can I trust my son? Can I trust my daughter? Is he valiant? Is he mighty? And according to our faith, according to our might, and according to our strength, he puts us into assignments. Assignments for which we are born into this world for. And I calls at this moment calls to mind the word of God that says, many are called, but few are chosen. Every man, woman, boy, and girl before the foundation of the earth had an assignment appointed to their life. Everyone has been called. When it says many are called, he's talking about everyone because the word of God tells us in the book of Romans, it says by one man's sin, many are made sinners, right? Right? How many have sinned? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so when he says many are called, everyone has been called. The sad, and one of the, to, to me, one of the saddest things in life as a leader of God's great people is that there are so few that pay the price, that are willing to yield themselves to his lordship, that are willing to go through the fire and go through the trials and willing to submit themselves to the rigorous, lonely sufferings that the sons of God must endure in the tests of life to where he can come and say, Son, I choose you. And the oil, he pours his oil out for the assignment and the task at hand. Very few come to the place They're called, yes, but few are chosen to that place. When he lays his hand on their head, I choose you. He's not talking about salvation in that scripture. No, no, no. He's talking about assignment for the call that is on their life. Can God depend on you? The next slide, my brother, please. I must close. For this cause, and he's talking about the blessings in Christ previously, the previous uh, 13 verses. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. How many riches does he have in glory? (laughs) The answer is, I don't know. (laughs) Okay? To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's what he's longing to do. He's longing to strengthen us with might in the inner man to become valiant warriors of the kingdom of God. Rooted and grounded in love. And then, of course, Brother Wayne preaches just a masterpiece of a sermon on verse 19. I'm sorry, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that works in in you according to the power that works in you what can you imagine what can you dream of him doing he's able to do way exceeding abundantly more than that but it's according to the power that works in us next slide 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Can I just talk about this just for a few brief minutes here? Okay? The weapons that we fight with are not these guns here. Some of you need permits for them. They're not revolvers. They're not swords. They're, we're not gladiators today in the natural life. But we are in the spiritual realm. And I, I believe all of us understand that, at least to a certain extent. But they, the weapons that we fight with are mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. Now, Brother Reuben just talked about the gates that cannot prevail against us. And as I like to refer to this, if this wall here were a fortress, the enemy has a fortress. The last thing that Satan and all his cohorts want to see is the sons of God come rolling into town. Brother John, you remember when we went in to pray over your, child, your grandson. And the Lord showed me the picture. There were about, what, six of us walking down the halls. And nobody had any loud boots. But, but it reminded me, the Lord showed me, Lael, we are going in here with an assignment to clean house here. And, and it felt in my spirit, not in my flesh, but I felt my spiritual man almost flexing. Uh -huh. Here we come. And what are you going to do to stop it? There's an assignment for the sons of God today. The last thing Satan wants to see is the sons of God roll into town. It's the last thing they want to see. Hey, <laughs> they'd rather see you catch a cab and roll out of town. But we won't because we are mighty men of valor. And there is a fortress, there is a stronghold that Satan puts around cities. There's strongholds that he puts around individuals. There's strongholds that he puts around families. And he, God, the Almighty Father, equips and he trains us. And we go up to the stronghold. And can you see the men of God roll into that town? And there's a fortress. And the commander says, line up. And I had this picture when the Lord showed me this scripture. Remember the old hay hooks? Some people still use them, but the old hay hooks where you... Ping. I saw mightier hooks than that. And men hooking into this wall. And upon the commander's command, pull! And the strongholds... Oh. Down they come. Why? Because we are valiant. We are strong. We have dominion over the fortress. We have dominion over the strongholds. They must come down with the valor that is in us. We've been trained by the best. Or have we? That you must decide. It comes to the yielding to the lordship of Jesus Christ. But to those who yield to the lordship of Jesus Christ and are equipped with might in the inner man by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are commanded by the greatest commander of all the ages. And strongholds will come down by the authority of his word. They will. Some of you would rather use picture terms like we back the old four-wheel drive up there and put the old log chain and, and put her in the old low gear. And the wall, you like that picture better. I don't care what picture. All I'm saying is that by the command of God, the strongholds come down, flats, when we are trained by the Lord of glory. Are we together? 
casting down imaginations. There are so many people that have computation and they have arguments and reasonings in their mind to try to com- compute why the Word of God is not valid. Listen, we got out of the, the revival meetings in Harlan and we were going to leave for Holmes County at 11 o'clock the next morning, get our things done. I got a phone call by a local pastor. Lil, I want to talk to you. And I knew what was coming. He wanted to invalidate what God had done in the city. We give him no credence. We cast down those imaginations. No, you have no right to speak those things in my office. In Jesus' name. Amen. No. Hallelujah. No, not in this house. We don't give way. We don't give room for those imaginations, the computation of reasonings. No, 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 not in the house of God. We believe the Lord of glory. And we cast down those imaginations. And every high thing, cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And I always struggled with this. Peter tells us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It just means know more about him. <clears throat> yes and no. He's talking about the revelation of truth and himself into the heart. And he does that. He does that to the unsaved. He does that to the saved and prophetically of what he's wanting to do. That is the knowledge of the Holy One, the knowledge of God. And he reveals that to us. But you know what happens?